Hello football fans, welcome to another exciting episode of In Touch with the Legend. Yes, your favorite footballing show where we bring you Zimbabwe footballing legends to come here and share with us their football journey. Like you know that in football we have got journalists, we have got reporters, we've got administrators, referees, you know, you name it. So all of those, they are all legends of Zimbabwean football. And remember we had Tendai Buanya here, we've got we had Wilfred Mukuna here, we had Lazarus some Rushomana as administrator. We had, we had, we always have uh, different, uh, different uh, people that are coming here in the field of football. So today is not different. We've got a legend in the house. He is a football administrator. He is also, I can call him a journalist, sportscaster, legendary sportscaster that he is. He is right here in the studio to share with us his journey into football, his journey in sport in general as well. We have Legendary, Mike Madhuri. Good to have you, uh, Alex. How are you doing, bud? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> you right? I'm okay. Super. You know, you, you have no idea. Uh -huh. You have no idea how many people we always asking. Chumbo wounds, chumbo wounds, boys is also banana. Chumbo chumbo wounds, boys is trombones. What do you? What about? Oh, gee, where? Wow. Where, 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 where? Yeah, you know, people people are always curious about you. They 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 know you as this uh, famous sports because you you it's, for you for for us it's like more Barry and Mike. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, guys, it's Mike. Yeah. yeah, it's not Barry and Mike. Yeah. It's Mike. You're alone. Yeah, You're isolated. Uh, today I'm by myself. You're isolated. I think let me yes. just start off by saying uh, yes. how humbling it is uh, mm. to be invited here yes. because um, I've always viewed myself as a fan. So oh, I think just, just just like those people <laughs> who uh, have been asking mm. uh, for Barry and myself to be on the show, I think it's uh, it's very humbling because uh, it's been a long journey. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's moments like these that make it worthwhile. Yes. Yeah, it yes. makes it absolutely worthwhile. Yeah. You're actually a legend. <laughs> okay, we, we're also fans. I support Manchester United, yeah. I support Capes United, so I'm, a, I'm also a fan. So you, we'll get there yeah. to the Liverpool, Liverpool uh, side of things. That, but that's it. people want to know where it all started. Mike, I don't know what Well, it's, it's, a, it's a journey that's uh, it's been long. Uh, it's been uh, colourful, it's been exciting. Uh, I think the journey starts uh, in the year 1980, mm -hmm. uh, called Sanyati. Those of you who don't know Sanyati, Sanyati I think yeah. it's about uh, 96 kilometers uh, northwest of Kadoma, mm -hmm. uh, cotton country. Uh, yeah, Kwairi Madonje, that is it. Uh, that is, uh, you know, they used to call it a white gold back then. White gold, yes. Uh, because uh, that was, uh, I think, something that was central uh, to our community. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people lived off cotton. Uh, quote before on, gold. Yeah, before gold. Before gold. Yeah, before gold. <laughs> so, no one in the world, I got it on yeah. Uh, when people would go out, they would uh, either be working at Ada, if you know Ada estates, yes, Ada, they used yeah. to have a big estate in Sanyati. Mm. They would work there. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there was also CMB, uh, later known as Kotko, yeah, Cotton Marketing Kotko, Board. Yeah. Uh, they also, of course, had the second biggest ginnery. Uh, that was uh, something that we used to boast about as a community. <laughs> <laughs> the second biggest ginnery. Uh, I think Glendale, uh, on your way to Bindura, had the biggest ginnery. Mm. So Sanyati, popularly known for its cotton, and uh, cotton was really the heartbeat. Uh, all mm. the banks, all the businesses, Zakavura uh, Township, Pedu, Pains Ada. Everything was really based around cotton. Mm. And during the cotton season, uh, everyone and everything would come alive. Uh, so that, that is... the yeah, yeah. It started off as the only bank. Uh, mm. And so they made a killing. Uh, mm. In Sanyati back then, when you Roma checkavo, then Marieta say, "Wono, wono kesha ma checkavo, yeah. vachi buda imomo, vachi no tenga ma grocery, vai tenga ma wardrobe, vai tenga mbeda, vai enda kunana power sales, vai enda uguma faro." Yeah. So the community will come alive, and so that is the community in which I was born. Okay. Uh, in 1980, do guandika kurira, uh, and uh, I was born into a family of uh, six children, mm -hmm. uh, three boys uh, and uh, three girls. Uh, I am the second boy. Uh, there was uh, an older brother of mine. He passed away a few years ago, and then I have a yes, younger I brother uh, yeah. called uh, Max. And um, all of us very sporting uh, in our young days as well. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, I started off, I think with sports, you sometimes don't know your giftings, you don't know your areas of strength mm. when you're initially a very young man. And I found out that in those communities, there were a lot of boys more gifted than I was, you know, mm. really, really, really talented. Listen, I was an average uh, soccer player, uh, mm. I will have you know. But uh, I had heart. Uh, love I, yeah, this I loved the sport. Uh, so I was one of those guys where Paisaros were team Paipa. Mm. Uh, I wasn't the first two or three names to be picked, but I would eventually be picked. That was Paisaros, but yet, I know, we got number number two. Yeah. You know, that, that sort of thing because I, I had a lot of hard work and a lot of passion uh, and so I was a, an average footballer but um, soccer really was what um, drove uh, our young communities back then even mm. you know I went to Chiguare primary school for my grade one and two mm. uh, my father was a teacher there uh, so I went to that school that was you the only sport there. You yeah were not teacher. I, I don't know my father was very strict yeah, he, he, uh, he didn't roll like that. Uh, yeah. In fact, it actually made things tougher for you wow. because uh, yeah, yeah. my father then held you to a very high standard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, had be yeah. for you had to be accountable for everything. So, you didn't get any, you didn't get off. You had to be You didn't get off. You had to be. Why to quit a track? You to be in Do what the other kids are doing. Do what the other kids are doing. Uh, and so that is uh, the life at Sanyati. Grade one and two is what I spent uh, at, at Chuguare. Mm. We were too young then to be playing, of course, uh, competitive sport. Of course, so, yeah. uh, and then grade three, my father took me to um, a boarding school. Uh, in grade in, three? Yeah, in grade oh, three. Yeah. Yes. What happened is that uh, he went for a meeting uh, at Sir John Kennedy Primary School uh, in town. town. Kutunas. <laughs> Kutunas. <laughs> so he went for a meeting. Uh, I think Pangapaita a problem. I think he had master manga mm. So Karevaita my meeting. You know, he was an EO, district education officer. And mm. so they would pick a school where the different primary schools would. Uh, send their headmasters or their teachers and they would meet. Mm. So my father, I think being a, a very curious man, then asked the headmaster of uh, this uh, almost white school back then called Sir John Kennedy, mm. he asked him, listen, what would it take for my children to come here? Uh, and I think the headmaster, Mr. Howarth, in jest said, listen, I got pass an oral test. There was this oral test where they would make you read yeah, these yeah. words. If they pass that, uh, your children can no, come. So I'm there on the ground. Ah, you know what I'm going to say? Shgoro. I was in Rova. In Rova. So two weeks later, I was dancing right off on Monday. Kutaund. The the kids were buzz. Could they order a test? Yeah, order a test. It must have got some sickam rungu. Could you just read the chat? Go up, man. Go up, man. There on the ground. I got to go in the zone. I got to go in the one. I got to go in the order a test. And I remember I did very well. I got 24 out of 25. Wow. Uh, I got one word wrong. Uh, that mm. was ban. They got boon. They got a J. They got A E E O U. So yeah, they got a B U N. They got a boon. <laughs> but I got the other 24 uh, correct. Right. So that's how I got into that school. So yeah. that school back then uh, was an A school, just as good as any yeah, of imagine, your yeah. elite private schools now. <clears throat> yeah, so I this was uh, then, yeah. as, as good as your Hellenics, as good as your Hartman Houses, mm. uh, as good as your Ruzawis. Went into that environment, foreign environment. Uh, you know, it was, it was very difficult uh, because Urugu Vaksanyat, Urugu Taura Churungu. I knew, like, you, I could read. You yeah. know, because that was a function of school. But, I of course, swa, yeah. but, I spoken. Swa, but spoken, I, I couldn't yeah. speak a single word. You're also going into a different culture um, in terms of yeah, even just the time. food. Tangataba kusadza, ne moriwo, ne nyama, ne lacto, ya taijika, ne maoko. I'll tell you what happened. The first, we get there, the first meal I had was in the evening. Yeah. And uh, it, I remember it was um, curried, it was eggs in a curried uh, soup like okay. uh, yeah, my yeah. boiled eggs yeah. uh, and with rice. 
Apa tangati na matron e, churungu. Yeah. E, I I I I moto. Saka apa fuke knife. Da bata mad andi zuko bona bata fuke knife. Ndeko ni sonda. Tamba ne fuke yaya. Zai rungu manya musuku mbe. Kuti ndiri ba imaje. Kuti ndiri ba tena mau kusasa. Ah, don't use your hand. Don't use your hand. Dada yo. Ah, ndaka rande nzara lo. Ndaka tazu kuti. Ndaka pesa nda sasa rande nda. Ah, dasu tazu. Wanri ma disa story ya tu sari pumbu. 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 Wanri Saka mori mwana mdiki maji, seven years old. Kuti maji ndita sende kata, ah, mm. murungu ya haru kufava uyo. I'd rather she sleep hungry than go to dim disappoint hey, murungu. Hey. Saka daba, nangu siya, shaka daba. Ish. And you know, after 30 minutes, ka, mm. they used to have waiters, they would come, what up visa? Wanga wa sinacha wow. kutatimu wa wangu funga uta, hai, zaadzi, skuda kujika, hai, 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 integrate myself learn good okay fork and knife you know mm, it was mm. so uh, going to school again ndangani singa zvichurungu saka ndait i used to sit next to this guy and justin anderson yeah taishe ama desk ya kabata naye kuti unofura uchivhara eh saka he couldn't speak shona but what i then did was that ka ndaitaimira so popi wa my instructions i akaburitsa textbook re maths ndai vhura ondo burizo textbook re maths ndo isa pamso eh Sa dam time ra kavura pa page 43 in the vuro pa page 43 ndo isa pa page 43 so that was mad so that was mad yeah so i had to adjust but it was a very difficult time a very difficult time because uh, you know back then i'll tell you this um, the environment was very racist uh, we yeah, were dealing with yeah, a, yeah. a lot of white teachers remember it was just a few years after independence mm. uh, and so there was still you know that feeling especially amongst the white community that they were better than us that we yeah. uh, didn't deserve to be there that we yeah. were crushing in on yeah, a, a, a party that didn't belong parts. to them yeah. and for me i think it was worse because i just wasn't a, a, a black kid i was a black rural kid yeah. uh, so even the black kids that were at that school also frowned on me as well. Right? Oh, because I don't know you in Zaran Zaran. So that, that, that's, that, that's what really then built my, my passion for sport because yeah. uh, for me, school, the normal school hours were very tough. They were very difficult. But back then, there was sport in the afternoon. Of course, so you yeah. knew that after lunch, uh, starting from three o'clock, until you half past five. Oh. So that was the time <laughs> I was liberated. <laughs> Why? Because yeah. sport is a universal language. Of course, yes. Sport. And it got yeah. uh, Spanish. Arabic. That's why you can see in modern football now a player, Spanish speaking player, can leave Colombia and go and play in Germany. Yeah. without even speaking a word of Germany. Why? Because the the the, the language, language of football yeah. is universal. Uh, so similarly at that age as well, sport then became an outlet because kumanya kumanya. Yeah. You know, mm. on your marks, good sir. set, go. go. Yeah. Taimanya. Right. Whether you, you are a good English lines. speaker, yeah. and I couldn't speak English. But if but we were running, we were running. Finishing line. Yes. So yeah. if we were playing soccer, we were playing soccer. Whether you were an English speaker or you were like me. Mm. Uh, so that's where I developed my passion for sport. And I looked forward to sport in the mm. afternoon. Why? Because it was an outlet. Yeah. It was a time where I found acceptance. Mm. Because you know that amongst children, the better you are, at sport, in sport. Uh, the better appreciated, the better you, get, appreciated yeah. you get. So now those kids that may have looked down on me when we were in the classroom, mm -hmm. saying to, ah, we are going to ah, we are going to ah, we are yeah. going to When it came to the sports field, now when it came to running, when it came to doing certain events, when it came to swimming, they were like, ah, you know what? He's actually not so bad after all. Yeah, He's a yeah. good guy to have on our team and so forth. Yeah, so yeah. It, 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 it was at that time, I think, that I started really uh, appreciating Feeling sport, accepted, enjoying yeah, yeah. sport, because I think for me, sport brought a sense of acceptance. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. it. I feel it. Yeah, so, yeah. and uh, I, I enjoyed that swimming again. I, I remember swimming third term. I was in grade three. Uh, so, Kusanya Tukwedu, there is a big river. The Munyati. Yeah, I was about to ask you. Yeah. So the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the Munyati River. So yeah. it's called the Munyati River. I think if you are, mm. if you are ever driving uh, along the Arare Bulawai Road, yeah. uh, after Kadoma, you will actually cross uh, the river, the Munyati River. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, that river then swings right round. 
and goes oh. ino no bata sanya ati kwe ducha ito kumusha. Oh. Ino utadarika ne pama doda kumusha kwa madoda cha yako kuna ziku hey. kowe. Okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what used to happen is that as, as youngsters we used to go a lot to the river. Uh, yeah, we used to go and swim, yeah, no, exactly. So, yeah. Taito Rova, Taito Twina, Tisto yeah. Rova Ngege, you know, Ngege on Ezra. Oh, when you look to him, yeah, to win. Eh, eh, I can't go to the foot. But let's yeah. not, uh, you know, yeah, you got to see anything. Let's not go there. So, I tried to win, but Ngege on Ezra. Ngege. Ngege, what's Ngege? Backstroke. Oh, in yeah, it was in Yeah, I'm big stroke. You know, I can swim. <laughs> you can swim. No, no can. not even from here to here. <laughs> from here to where you are. I can't. I, I can't should swim. take you to Sanya today. <laughs> so, so we, we learned to swim in that river. So I, I met John Kennedy, mm. and then third term, there was the swimming gala. Yeah, yeah. So it's competition time. All through the term, Paenda could practice. I saw some house here in Victoria. So, you know, they put you yeah. in houses. I think yeah. Kennedy, Tangatine, Victoria, Tangatine, Charter, and Rickson. Mm. So, I was in Victoria. They, they wore yellow. So, that's why I'm oh, happy I'm wearing you, yellow today. Wearing so, yellow. yeah, so yeah. they wore yellow. So, throughout the term, the, the white teachers, uh, they were basically sidelining me. Are you, are you, he can't swim. Are you, are you he he book, came yeah. from, so, you know, because I couldn't <laughs> speak English. <laughs> because I couldn't speak English, I didn't yeah. understand. <laughs> Why am I being said like that? Ah, ah, yeah. ah, 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 so I was uh, put with the others. You know, the others. Why people watch K Light, Chia Chia, Zuma Flota, Zongo Tango Tango, Mutura, then we're not going to swim. We're just swimming. So what happened on the swimming gala? Pane two competitors, them house made of a canoe, no kakuya. And then the race had to happen. So what happened is that then instead of wanting to lose my points, because remember, you get my points, ka? Yeah. even I paid the number last, last, last point. Two hour point. Yes. So yes, I was going to go for my points, my point. two. But I was going to ah, come up there, Zugu. No, I had no go. No, I had no go. My face. So that's more who pin down. So that we got in there. Ah, and I was like, no, no problem. So that I pin that. This is an A race with the best, so-called best students. Yeah. Forty yari. No, and that it. Ta. Musoro pass. Andy, and I got a bosom Zamsur and Angoro, but you tend to get a zero. Tend back, this is this is no sugar grown down, assum Zamsur and number one, number one, and I'm going to go down, never say in a curve. You know, that's how they people realize we can't swim. Yeah, so I was in the swimming gala, and then they were like, Hey, 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 yeah, uh, in the, the, the swimming yeah. pool, the current. So mm -hmm. you definitely become a better swimmer. Exactly. Uh, am I might not have had. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine? Yeah. So I think I might not have had the right technique, but in terms of propelling myself through the water, could I saw, no, could I saw? I know. I was top. So I then obviously got my technique refined over the years. So I used to swim a bit as well. Uh, and then, uh, so primary school, played a bit of uh, rugby here and there, but I was smaller than uh, my standard because I had gone to school a year younger. Okay, so yeah, I went, yeah. I started my grade one when I was five years. Oh, yeah, so was I was always competing. Yeah, I don't allow so I, I was always competing against what? Against bigger boys. Mm -hmm. So when I was five, my, my classmates were six. So yeah. they were bigger. So in terms of uh, rugby, I was always slightly smaller yeah, yeah. Uh, than the rest of the students. So it, it was a very interesting journey uh, that uh, in, in primary school. But also in primary school, you know, one of the things that we had was that we, we had a school that had all the facilities. Uh, when I was now in boarding school, mm -hmm. it was also a school that had all the equipment. Yeah. So all it took was really your passion yeah. uh, as a student. Uh, mm -hmm. Your passion as a sports person, to say, "Guti pa weekend, wa mo e pa wani kwa kagara ba ba vachi tamba vachi wa mo ajuna TV." If you wanted, you could go. If you wanted, you could go. Yeah, exactly. Duku kumbiro bora. Yeah. Kato duku kumbiro ma cricket bet. Nema bora duku kumbiro ma rugby. And you would sign them out, and they would yeah. give you, and so you could then play. So one of the things that happened in primary school is that tai tamba, tai tamba sport. Yeah. We yeah. spent a lot of hours playing, playing sport, sports. which is something that I don't see now. Of course. You know, yeah. I, I don't think the modern day student or the modern day child who is, let's say, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old is playing enough sport. I got my extra yeah. lessons. Yeah, I got my extra lessons. I play PlayStation, I got a movie, but I got a movie. Why do you want to play? 
wapenza kumanda T waita maji watumwa waita zvese wapenza you finished at 10 o'clock maiko na kutanga kutamba bora na 10 yeah. zimongu auto rega kuya kuzodzika sadza maskati maskati woramba kuchitamba bora anditika moto zotumwa munhu endai munhu ndaidza aluwe kuti anzi iwe maiko yeah. ukareka kudzoka kuno kubaba wako uja waona anditi ya wakudzoka huruva rurumu yeah. Um, na six. But you have yeah, spent no less than six, seven, eight hours. That's a lot playing. of hours of sport. And yeah. so sometimes we refined our skills as schoolboys, not because we were getting coaching, but simply because we played long enough. Yeah. We played hours. for long hours. hours yeah. You would at yeah. least develop to a basic level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. So that's, that's, that was your, your, your primary your Yeah, primary that, that was and, primary and, school. And, and high school? High, high school. You, 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 went, you went to Jameson? Yes, I went to Jameson, which is the you, senior did school. Did your father, oh, it was the senior yeah, school Yeah, it's the senior school to, to, so to, to the John Kennedy. A, a, so it was an easy transition. It was an easy transition. But again, you know, uh, for me, it just seems good to my formative years are always difficult because I didn't get a boarding, a place in boarding uh, initially. So I went to stay with my aunt in Ramuka. Uh, well, when you went yes, for Form 1? Yeah, Form 1. So Form 1 and Form 2, I stayed with my aunt. Uh, in fact, I would say Form 1 because uh, it's, it's quite a tragic story. I, I stayed with my aunt. She was my um, father's sister, Tete mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, 10A Garwe Street. I'm interested in yeah. Kadoma. Yeah. You know, Kadoma is, is one of my favorite towns uh, because I used to play around there a lot. I yeah. had a friend, I had one of my best friends who stayed in Kadoma. So we used to visit there, so I know a bit, I know the corners. Of Kadoma, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Guys, just gonna go for a break. This is Mike Madonna in the studio, legendary sportscaster, club owner as well. Or if you're just joining us, yes, he's right here telling us about his formative years in this first segment. But we're just gonna go for a break. When we come back, we get back into the second segment when he is going from his primary school into high school at Jameson Prime in Jameson High School. What's gonna happen? Don't move away. Yes, guys, welcome back to the studio. We're going back into the second segment of In Touch with the Legend. Yes, we are in touch with the Mike Madota, legendary sportscaster at ZFM Sport. He was also on Sportsline. Uh, we'll talk about Sportsline later on because a <laughs> lot of people have been asking about Sportsline. So he will tell us 
about Spotline, guys. So if you are the one, one of those who are asking about Spotline, just stick around because we're going to be talking about. But before we get into the second segment, please just go to our Facebook page, like the page, and also go to our YouTube channel, like the channel, and subscribe to the channel so that we can always interact with you guys whenever we have features there because we've got so many things that we do, that we post on those platforms that we want you to see and interact with us there. We appreciate your comments as well. Even now, if you've got questions for Mike Madoda, he's right here. Ask the questions in the comment section, then we can try to respond to your questions as well. Or if you know something that is exciting about Mike Madoda that he hasn't <laughs> mentioned in his primary school time, just tell us, please. Just uh, give, us, give us a hint so that we can also know something that we don't know about Mike Madoda that we want us to know. But back to the conversation, Mike. You moved now from... from uh, you know, no, no, actually, let me tell you something interesting. You asked, you asked uh, people to send something interesting. That not. Let me tell you something, actually, about which I forgot about. <laughs> first. Okay, that's good. I was yeah. actually once arrested. In primary school? Uh, yes. Yeah, so so oh, this oh, is... So, in primary so, school? So, in primary school, when I went to boarding school, yeah, yeah. they... they, they my Fridays, I end up town. Okay, so, we we'll line up, yeah, yeah type of 50 cents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then, we end up town. So, yeah. <laughs> In that box, I don't know how much 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 I I'm yeah. telling you to this day, people might think it's a joke. I don't die now, but like I said, I do go back. That is as that Torah man. That I think a chocolate, but for Matthew, back in the Arab, because system here just was new. Who do I pay to? Who do I pay to? Yeah. So you know what? Yeah. So, you know what? Yeah. so you know what? The confusion is that I have a number of family in Abuja. I don't have. I don't have. <laughs> but, but I did not move yes. from uh, pa, okay. pa veranda pe shop yeah, outside. No, 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 no. I was standing there in the car. Ah, you know what? No. Where do I go and pay? You don't know, confuse me. You know, sometimes, you know, exposure. But yeah, anyway, yeah. let's go back to Jameson. So, uh, high school, I went to the senior school. Mm. Uh, I then. I did not want to wear a body. Yeah. I got to go to the car. But I was very functional and very efficient those days. Yeah, yeah. We are quarter to seven. We are at bus stop. It's to don't exact town, no van to farm and so forth. Mm. But then when I was uh, I think it was about October, if I remember, yeah, October, uh, my aunt then she suffered a stroke. Maneru oh, Chitove Mumbaso. Uh, I think in Nagana <laughs> because mm. she then uh, choked uh, in a, I think back at roadside as well. During the process, yeah. so the guy told ah, so you know, I think some things, some things, you know, happen. So the guy said, "Nah, you check because she was now, you know, panema sounds are make, and she was in the next room. So the guy no check and the guy, you know, she's out of funds. No, make a number two. Eh, yeah, ne paga pane scan ibat sra ne bas. Oh, okay. So ah, she's not going to check up here, but go tete, you know, the guy told me, ah, when I go to roots, I she was in a thing. So then I had to call the neighbors, uh, and do the guy told so. Funera, you know, Zani, ambulance, and then she went to the to to the hospital. But uh, I think she was then pronounced she um, dead uh, on arrival. That was so bad, yeah, that so was I, bad I think experience. I was I was uh, I was just nearly thirteen. I wasn't yeah, even that's, thirteen. That's I was twelve. Bad so yeah. I then had to come back, and I remember the hardest thing for me was um, coming back, and then kwa kwa kuma five, maukseen. And then, yeah, we was speaking. Now we look at phone uh, at one of our neighbors. Good. And the phone is my 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 dad. Father, yeah. yeah, and she was what I am down. We know in You know. Shit. Yeah, and was in Yasha, and I was twelve years old, and I was telling him that what his sister has passed away. So that was very difficult. So after that, yeah, because uh, yeah. the maid <coughs> then left, uh, I then stayed by myself. Ipab, yeah, Ipab. You didn't move. Yeah, I didn't move. Yeah, I didn't move. I stayed by myself. 
So Why, you and grew then, up fast? Uh, yeah, I grew up very fast. So yeah. they, um, uh, the house had been given to my uncle. Uh, he then put in uh, neighbors. My mm. uh, boys, they were three guys that way. They, they were Angar Maroja. So I had uh, the one room oh, and yeah, so forth. Yeah. yeah, but I basically I was now cooking for myself at that at that age. Yeah, I used to take my tin and my beef. Yeah, uh, remember soon. Yeah, soon. Oh, one of my noodles. Yeah, chaku tin. I told you, you should not take paraffin. Stop. Yeah, yeah. paraffin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I told you, paraffin. Yeah, I told you, take and stop big and stop that sort out. I would actually sort myself but out. But I'm not independent. But boys, I I I I buy manch. I'm a roger. I'm the guy who sells wire manch. We buy from a beef. Yeah, I buy. Even Maria and I buy. Even if it's my wallet, yeah. So I buy. Yeah, so I buy. What is it? So I buy. Pin the manch. You know, guess a baby. One of my zomora, Jee. Ah, yeah. Zomora can a pondo. Kana jaut sana ndaka nda kuta sisti manje uti even ndaka rara nda ichi stray pa chumvaru jaja on my wrist nda hivyo nato nyangu mtoi le tu nda pinda nacho nda kate kache waterproof sana nda hivyo nda pinda nacho mtoi as ya so I then spent then after that then I went there was another relative of mine I got a murimuka imomo then I stayed with them until then I moved into boarding in form three but that that hindered me a lot because you know when I was now staying by myself playing sports now was a bit difficult because I had so many things to manage I stopped playing sport actually yeah I didn't have time yeah I didn't have time to be playing sport kids just go out to play no rather just go out yeah because I had to be managing a lot of things yeah I'm trying to manage a lot of things and also just trying to deal just with the stress of of staying alone of of doing all these things the yeah, well. and, and losing the aunt and so forth. So that it was a very uh, difficult time. So thank God I then went into boarding because that's mm. when I then, so I'd stopped even from two years. I'd stopped because sometimes, you know, because I didn't come from a well-off family. Mm. So uh, there were times where, you know, we didn't have money for transport because you had to be paying Kasupko. So yeah. sometimes I would walk uh, from Rimuka from yeah, Rimuka yeah, to Jameson. Yes, I would. So yes. the, and I to check and we not look serious. But I'm good as I was there. Yeah, it's about uh, six kilometers. Yeah, I can consider the moment distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that it's far. Not, it's not that far. Yeah, it was yeah. about six kilometers. Sometimes yeah. I would six do that. Is, but, six is doable. But it meant that I would have to wake up early. Yeah. So it means with yeah. five, then yeah. uh, by about uh, quarter to six. You start the walking. Auto over and the auto mm. to farm, so that I could get uh, to assembly. Assembly mm. was half past seven. So I, I made sure that I would get there half seven. Then also similarly as well after school so i i then couldn't afford to be playing sport until 5 5 30. because, because then if darkness, i had to then yeah. yeah then it would be dark so i would uh, opt to check 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 so form two to be honest in terms of sport i didn't really play much mm. but then i got into boarding uh form three and that's when I started. I'd always played cricket. My brothers played cricket. My older mm. brother was a phenomenal cricketer. Mm. Uh, and so in Form 3, again, similar story to, to, to the swimming story. Uh, they needed someone to cover for someone. Mm. Uh, and okay. my, yeah, my brother was one of the senior players. He was a first team player. Uh, and then he was like, I oh, know my little brother can play. He played in mm. primary school. He can cover. So this was under 15, Form 3. So mm. I went, played, and that is it, never looked back. So the sport I actually played quite a lot of uh, in, in my high school, which I was very good at, was cricket. <coughs> was cricket. Yeah, yeah. I, I played a lot of cricket. Yeah. yeah. And no wonder, no wonder you've got so much passion when you speak yes. about cricket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the passion came from two things. I think I, I, I was always curious. I was always a student of, mm. of sport. Oh, yeah. So my library, if you remember, I even in my magazines, I told me, hey, oh, yeah. sport. Penny one ends the cricketer. There was oh, another yeah. one, he ends wisdom. And so I would go in at break time, I would be reading those magazines, you know, reading about Wanana Ketley Ambrose, mm -hmm. reading about Wanana Steve Waugh, you know, players like that. So I developed a, 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 an interest at that very age about cricket. That, that was the one sport that I truly loved. <laughs> I could now communicate. I, I could now communicate because I think it took yeah. me about a year. To, mm. to, to start speaking English probably. Yeah, yeah. So by about grade four I was fine. But high school, I was high school tanga tap to uh tanga tap to shout a chaiso chai. So yeah, why don't both got pum and do mad? But uh why was that I know you I don't bang sanya. So uh by then I was fine, so I was reading and then also I think at that time as well the you know two two big events uh, for, for me T V was 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 critical as well. You mm. know, T V inspires. 
of course, uh, a lot yeah. of people. And for me, TV was really critical. Mm. Uh, people ask me when I started supporting Liverpool. I started supporting Liverpool 1987. Oh. That's when I started supporting Liverpool because oh. that's when Liverpool was at its pomp. Of and course, that's yeah. when I went to boarding school and that's when in, I watched in, TV. And key, yeah. yeah so so Pai pa Buda, pa Buda big, big league soccer. My father also was a very big Liverpool fan. Oh, yeah. My father, Liverpool. Uh, my connections, obviously, are Bruce Grobbler. A lot of Zimbabweans. And then my father, that, John Barnes. Yeah. John, John Barnes. Barnes was a very popular player. Now yes. Ian Rush. So even Rijitambo, uh, I saw my father be going, Barnes, Barnes. Yeah. Barnes. In you know, combination, yeah, of course, my sister John yes, Barnes. I, I, I know he loved, he loved John Barnes. Yeah. So uh, Liverpool with Timmy and Nak. So mm. no And then also 1987, that year as well. Pandega in Daujaud is the year I watched my first uh, game of football in Zimbabwe. Uh, my father took me to Remuka Stadium. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this was 1987. I think Do Pisa Highlanders. There's a Highlanders mm. team. Yes, they didn't win the league that year, but they swept all in terms of the cup competitions. Mm. Winners, yes, Rothman's Shield, Chibuku, Zifa Cup, Yaka China, Timmy Anana Rambo, mm. Willard Kumalo, mm. Douglas Muloy. Yeah, that team was yeah, strong. Yeah, Manana Tsai Moyo. Yes, Titus Majola, Tobias Mujambanje, yeah. Namo Shambira. You know, players yeah. like that, yes. That yes. team. Yeah, 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 I love my Jaiwana. Yeah, exactly. I love my Jaiwana. Exactly. So that team, my yeah. father, of course, is of uh, Ndebele uh, stock. Oh, okay. So he then obviously wanted to watch the team. Mm. So we went back then also, Rio Tinto. Yeah. Later to be known as Eiffel Flats. Yeah, 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 uh, that game. Uh, yeah, I was they put on a show, Islanders, the black and white striped saga. Yeah. That's when I, I fell in love with the Islanders. Yeah, he he did the same thing the following year. He then took uh, my older brother mm. to Rimuka Stadium again to watch uh, Rio Tinto take on Zimbabwe Saints this time. Yeah. 1988, remember Zimbabwe Saints, Zimbabwe Zimbabwe Saints, Saints and Ephraim Zimbabwe Jawanda. So this yes. time he took my older brother. Yeah. And so my older brother was a Zimbabwe Saints supporter. Oh, Why? Because that's the because first that's team the first that he watched. That, yeah, 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 the nah. first game he watched. My first the game winner. was Highlanders, and so I, I, I've always yeah. supported Highlanders. Uh, it's always from those important days. with your mm. children, yeah? Mm -hmm. that, that, that's how you influence yes. your children as well. Expose if you, them. If you, if you expose expose them, them. Then they take it up from they there. They take it up from there. Yeah. So, you know, it was not even a case of uh, my father saying, You have to support this team. No, no. Mm -mm. He just, he, took, he just took me to a game, and uh, it was enthralling, it was exciting. Mm. You know, the stadium was packed to the rafters, yeah. uh, and the, the teams played excellent football. And so it was difficult not to fall in love uh, mm. with one of the teams. So yeah. if it hadn't been Highlanders, it would have been Rio Tinto. Uh, back well, then, yeah. yeah, so it, it was great. So, it again, would have been sad. yeah, it, <laughs> it would have been sad. <laughs> because now they're going <laughs> <laughs> to, if had had to if pick had another had gone, team, yeah, if it yeah, won the, yeah. the Rio so, Tinto, but, but way, back it then, been even at that yeah. young age. Tanga talk to Ziva Bora always. Tanga talk to Ziva, and it was not. Nowadays, I find that a lot of our youngsters know only the teams they support. Yeah. So if they support FC Platinum, for example, they know only FC Platinum. Even a lot of our adults, a even lot the of adults supporters, today, yeah. they know only the team they support. Back then, Tanga talk to Ziva Highlanders, Dynamos, yeah. Caps United, Mangura. We want Tinto. to just watch football. Yeah, yeah. Taito Ziva Masters. Why it was Ziva to the team here? Go can I stand by the E? Shasha had on the Eids. Yeah, I you would think, know I, the I other think teams. the media also played a big yes. part in, uh, in mm. informing, mm -hmm. informing as the younger generation at that time. There was information. Because there was information that was always close by the parade, even my newspaper. Newspaper was still uh, very much in fashion. So, my uh, uh, picture. Yeah. Did you check out my pictures? Uh, yeah, I don't want to check out. I don't want to check out. I don't want to check out. Parade, yeah, up. Yeah, pa, pa center, especially yeah. parade. Especially you know the parade. difference is, Alois, is Mazwano Ukavura, my newspapers, Edu. And it's no criticism to, to, to those who are working in, 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 in the field of media. But we have got too many stories that are dominated by administrators. We've got too many uh, stories that are centering on scandals. Kudara, the back page was for the stars. Yes. The back page was are, for the, like the, the players, the teams, the glory, the result, the wins. So that is why we knew 
who was who in the zoo. We used to fight yeah. for the newspaper. Mm. You know, mm. the newspaper on the right next door, and I get the newspaper, and I'm like, I'm going to get the newspaper, and I'm going to get the newspaper. You used to take the big page picture. So we always wanted to know what the big page is. Who is on the big page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, nowadays, I think the administrators and the coaches, uh, I think, uh, actually dominate uh, news a lot more than, more than the, the actual soccer players. Our soccer players have just become pawns. And, and so it's difficult to build up stars when you continually talk about the administrators, when you talk about administrative issues, when you continually talk about the coaches. And it's never, when a team wins, it's about the coach. Uh, yeah, Brito is more popular. Yeah. Like now, Brito, Brito is, is more, more popular at Highlanders than, uh, right now than, the, than all the absolutely. players. Absolutely. So that that, yeah, that, that, that is right, yeah. that is sort of like the the problem that we have. And so back then it was about the stars. We knew Vana Angirai Chapo, Sheikh Menta or Friday Piri. We knew all those players. You know the way you say them yeah. now. We don't yeah. Yeah. Like a no, 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 no. Because you, why don't you talk about Bora? We start in Dini Claudius Jiripai. Yeah. Nas. And it got all the white of Buka. Yeah. Eh, Why? Because those were our stars. Yeah. Those were our stars. And so they inspired us, even through my playground. Mm -hmm. That is it. We knew, even at St. John Kennedy, which was a predominantly white school. We knew our stars. Yeah. Governor Digital, Vitalis Takawira, yeah. Digital. You know, Vana yeah. uh, Claudius, Jiripai, Okoyo. We, we yeah. knew all those guys. It we were going to sign out uh, today. They don't know Peter Mutu. No, they Jansons. don't know. They, they don't know. Even if you go to your, to your Hartman houses right now, you ask them who, who is playing for, for Caps United. They don't know. If you ask them it's who really is bad. playing for uh, Bulawayo Chiefs, they don't know. It's bad. Yeah, so it's, that, that was the situation. So high school, uh, for me, I think it's a period where I learned a lot about the game through oh, yeah. studying. Yeah. Uh, through studying. Uh, I was never a high achiever in terms of sport. I think mm. my, my, my brothers uh, achieved a lot more. They were far better, uh, more talented. You know, they were left footers. My older brother was ambidextrous. He could use either, either, foot, uh, yeah. either foot, either hand. Uh, I was right. You know, <laughs> my mm. young brother is left footed. So from a sporting perspective, you know, the, the left handers, the left footers always seem to have an advantage. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're in cricket, the left handed batsman is, is, is always, um, you know, mm. has got a, a, a seeming advantage. Um, uh, in terms of just his application, especially when he's facing right-handed bowlers, uh, who are the majority. So mm. they, they achieved a lot more. But I think that just allowed me really to, to zone in on reading. On reading. Reading getting, about yeah, this world. So I knew a lot, even from high school. Yeah. I think Uga Vunza, a lot of guys I went to school with, especially who were in boarding school with me, uh, A-level. Yeah. Because I would be reading newspapers. So at break time. It shows up to I, now. I, I you, would, like yeah. encyclopedia. So I would yeah. go, I would go, break time. I would quickly go for break and then I would go to the library because they would have the newspapers. Yes. Then I would read the newspapers, read the newspapers, read the newspapers, read the magazines. Sh -sh -sh -sh. So I always kept myself up as to date. As soon as you touch the yeah. newspaper, you would go to the Absolutely. back page first. So when I was in hostel, so yeah, first. back page first. So when I was in hostel, didn't I go to the van? Yeah. Zaga Miraso. Zaga Miraso. So, so it's so something. Yeah, your yeah, a long yeah. Time it, ago. It, it started a very long time ago. Simply yeah. because you know what, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of research. I just, mm. you know, I just followed it out of passion, yeah. out of interest. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. that, to be honest, is the foundation. Then after high school, after high school, I went to UZ. Uh, I was a Yuba. <coughs> Yuba uh, yeah. Those are possibly, I think, the uh, most enjoyable years of my life. Uh, I can I, see you this smile. I, I, <laughs> what did I, you do? I what did you get up to? Uh, you I, cannot be I just think, enjoying books. Uh, most of it I can't say on a family show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, that smile is not about books. No, no. I enjoyed my, yeah. my uh, university years. It <laughs> was, yeah. So I was in Harare. I was a young man. Yeah. I was uh, discovering myself. Yeah. Uh, I also made very good friendships. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with people from uh, back, different backgrounds. Yeah. A lot of friends from Banana Watsomba, outside of Mutare, Vanu Vagunana Honde. And Watson's bar. Yes, uh, Watson's bar. Yes, Watson's bar. And Watsomba. A lot of guys from Mutare. Uh, and then yeah. a lot of guys as well from Bulawa, you know, Nkisto, Vigite mm. Mantin, Highlander support. And back then, Pataka Tire Mayuba. I was at UZ from 1999 and then uh, graduated mm. in 2002. You know, we used to get the payout. Yeah, yeah. It was a sizable amount then. 
You know, yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah. It was a, a phenomenal amount, and it allowed me to follow Highlanders during those years. Uh, now you took it upon yourself. Yes. Now, with the, now I'm a full-time Highlander. I used to watch. Adult, yes. So I must go. I will tell you this one. I'm done. Absolutely. I can claim mm. that within the, between 1998 and uh, 2002, during their glory years, I think I must have watched more than 90 percent of their games, wow. home and away. Home and away. We used to travel. With who? With uh, you with? Yes, with Nkisto. Oh, yeah, okay. He was my friend. He was, he was um, yeah. a, a, a Ndebele guy. Okay, yeah. Nkisto, obviously. Uh, and how we became friends, you know, he was very, you know, UZ could have these tribal lines that could develop because, you know, just... Um, you know, they came in with a lot of uh, suspicion as well, with, you know, uh, Mashona, Mashona, and Mujerini, then uh, yeah. similarly as well, you know, the Shona guys are also a bit on the edge. Mm. But I think with Nkisto, just out of uh, mutual respect, when he discovered that I was a Shona guy, even though I've got in Debele that he didn't yeah. even know, that I was a Shona guy who supported, who supported Highlanders. Highlanders yes. for, and then he mm. actually then, through observation, realized mm. that this guy is actually very passionate about Highlanders. Yeah. It's not just fake. He's actually with us in the stadium. Yeah. Do He's do. actually do it. <laughs> so we became very good friends. Yeah. As a, and we broke down those um, those tribal barriers and we became so very good friends. Yeah, so we would travel. We would mm. travel. Um, you know, whenever the national team was playing, Tista Kugomba. Mm. <laughs> yeah, to watch the national team. <laughs> you know, we could afford to actually get into Blue Arrow. If you remember Blue Arrow, yes, Blue it Arrow was the is. luxury coach service. Uh, Blue that Arrow used to, Express. it was, yeah, it was based, it used to leave from either Sheraton and then later on near Eastgate, the Eastgate offices. We oh, used yeah. to travel on Blue Arrow to go to, to Bulawayo to watch Highlanders play at Barber Fields. Wow. We used to stay in the Holiday Inn or at Rainbow Hotel. Uh, we could afford it. They might pay out. We could afford to do that. And oh, to cool. leave Mulawa, you come back to Harare and, and Islanders will be going to play. You're talking about Zimbabwe? Yeah. Right? The Islanders was going You're to play about Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe. Islanders will be playing in wow. Shishavane. Was uh, then around uh, that period, towards the end of it, is when um, uh, was this Shabani mine yeah. broke through. Uh, team Yanana Thomas Makwasha. Oh, that one. Uh, exactly. Uh, that is Bridget. it. Eh, eh. So Yanana Francis Chandida Francis as well. Bridget. That team, yes. Yeah. So we used to go. We used to go and support Islanders, go to Zishavane. It, wow. it was something that was not prohibited. Now it's something that can only be done by those who have the wherewithal and those who have the resources. But yeah. back then, it is something it that we affordable. could afford. Yeah, it was very affordable as a university student to actually yeah. live that lifestyle, to say, uh, Dynamo Sirku Tampa Nemswe Saturday, Ndrueda Kuna Yona, Nemswe Sunday, Ndrueda Kuna Rime Borafut. Pan a midweek game yeah. with Manero. Remember the way evening matches. Mami, yeah, we would go and yeah, yeah, anga chiri team. <laughs> so we would go and watch. So it yeah. was, uh, it was, it was uh, a time also. Then I think at the UZ, I think I was a fan, and I okay. really, yeah, I was a fan. I, I, yeah. I was a fan. I was on the stands. I was singing. I bought the T-shirts. I bought the jerseys. Yes, even in terms of my international teams, I think um, Sunday Chizambwa, Sunday Marimo back then, mm -hmm. he had his shop. In town, you yeah, know, yeah. I think it's a genuine, Sunday, yeah, Atlantic. Sunday Athletic. No, but I don't think I'm a jersey, so I could afford to go and buy myself. I remember I bought myself um, a, a Liverpool jersey, right? Jamie Redknapp. Yeah, yeah, that was the first was one I bought. Yeah, he was he was a very good player. Yes. So is, is, that, is that is that is that is that what you, you were talking about? Is it about football and traveling? Like yes, your best no, life. I enjoyed it. Yes, I enjoyed life, it. Yeah, you know, best my life, you know, best life as well. Yes, supporting football. Yeah, it was about supporting <laughs> and other things. Like I said, it's a family show. <laughs> 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 right, let's go for a break. When we come back from the break, we want to know from university where did you go? Yeah. You know, we're following up on Mike Madonna's life in sport. He is is right here if you've got questions please do throw them in in the comment section so that we can interact with you but for now we're just gonna go for a break while you are busy typing the question don't move away introducing the self-service portal Nyarazo has launched its very own self-service portal. This platform is available to Nyarazo clients via the Nyarazo Group website. Now you have your policy information readily available for your convenience. The self-care platform enables you to view your policy details, lives assured, policy plan type, and contact details. Edit your information, email, residential address, phone number, view your payment history, and outstanding balance. You are now able to make payments using mobile money platforms 
EcoCash, and One Money. You can get updated Sawira Berudi change rates. The portal also provides a summary of the product offerings and a life insurance, which includes the six pack, skull pack, and SIP policies. You can get a quote on the different policy types and apply online. Visit nyarazo.co.zw and enjoy autonomy in your interaction with Nyarazo. Welcome back. We've got Mike Madoda in the studio. Yes, if you don't know Mike Madoda, he is a legendary sportscaster. He is also the anchor at ZFM Stereo Sport. We are on air every man, every weekday from Monday to Friday on ZFM Sport. So if you want to follow us, uh, follow us on ZFM Sport. We are always there. Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Yes, ZFM Sport. Mike. We, we, you are at university, mm. you are a football fan, yeah. and from there? Yeah, I was a fan at, U, at UZ, so I, I loved that particular uh, time of my because it, it, mm. it came without any responsibility. From there, of I course, graduated yeah. in uh, 2002. Mm. Uh, this was in August. Uh, and then I had about three months in which I didn't do anything, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and then you were I, in No, 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 I was in Harare. What are you ah, doing? I'm saying to go and 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 go I was just just hanging around, just trying to figure out what was the well, next yeah. step. Uh, I had graduated, and then um, so 2003, I get into formal employment with uh, Gary Thompson and Associates, mm -hmm. um, and I started in the month of February. So that's mm -hmm. when I got into formal employment. Uh, worked there. I was in the, that's obviously the advertising industry. Mm -hmm. So that's um, marketing related. Uh, went in there, and uh, it was at uh, Gary Thompson and Associates that I then went into the world of media because mm -hmm. uh, in 2004 uh, Gary uh, wanted to revive TV. I think Gary Thompson obviously had been involved. He had done um, a show where he used to interviews, uh, interview different celebrities uh, in Zimbabwe and I think that had mm -hmm. worked out well for him but he wanted to produce more shows. So he, he asked us to come up with different concepts for different shows and one of the concepts we came up with was uh, international sport. It will be an international sports show so you can guess because yeah. I loved there sports. There you go. So it, it, was an easy, it was an easy one for <laughs> me and because I, I was also very fascinated with um, Sky Sports News. Oh, yeah. uh, if you remember Sky Sports News was then really at its pump. Mm. Uh, it was new. Uh, yeah, was to the Zimbabwean uh, audience yeah. Yeah. and uh, I just used to love their delivery, their presentation, how you know what in, in 30 minutes they could give you anything and everything that you needed to know out of the world of sport uh, and so I then suggested hey you know what why don't we come up with a sports show because I think there's a market for that mm -hmm. so uh, Gary agreed uh, and we set about um, coming up with a sports show and uh, selling it we found a sponsor uh, and then we had to look for the presenters. Mm. So initially we went with um, mm. with uh, a couple of guys and uh, the first guy really didn't work out. You know, he just didn't have the energy that's required for sports. You know, sometimes, you know, sports, you've got to have the, yeah, energy, the, the energy. You've the got to, yeah, he just yeah. didn't, he just didn't have it. So that didn't work out. We then, uh, the other guy was Steve Vickers. Uh, mm. Yeah, Steve Vickers. So Steve Vickers needed a partner. And then um, enter one Barry Manandi, who was working at, uh, he was the owner of another advertising agency uh, mm. called Columbus. And uh, they were working in partnership on a certain project with um, Gary Thompson and Associates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he came for a meeting and I remember thinking to myself, you know what, he speaks well. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, I should see that you've hit. Yeah, I was not going to see that. Yeah, that you've hit. Ah, no. So I said <laughs> to Gary, you know, how about that guy? You know, the yeah. guy, the guy who came for uh, for the interview. Yeah, for the interview earlier. You know, he looks for the meeting. Now. Yeah, for the yeah. meeting. For the meeting. Yeah, he looks like he's he's got a bit about him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it turned out. So he invited Gary. Uh, he invited Barry. Uh, that's Gary. And then, um, you know what? Yeah, he he absolutely nailed it. You know. That's where you met Barry. Yeah, that's where I met Barry. 
Uh, okay, yeah. But uh, I was just the other guy. I'm sure Barry must have walked in thinking, who's this little guy? Who is guy? this guy? But yeah, you are so, the one who uh, recommended so, so, that you, so, let's try So he comes in, uh, he does this with, um, with Steve, Steve Vickers. Vickers. Yeah. And then just before we launched, unfortunately, there was a technicality with Steve Vickers and then he couldn't uh, be on the show. So we then needed a partner for Barry. And the yeah. uh, client was saying, we've got to launch, guys. We've got to launch. We've got to launch. We've got to launch. Yeah. Got to launch. So in on the TV. End, yeah, on TV. So in the end, we really couldn't find someone. They, we were pressed for time. So I then decided, you know what? I might as well move from uh, behind the scenes uh, and join Barry. Initially, it was supposed to be a stopgap. Did stop you gap, know that you could? A stopgap. I didn't oh, know yeah. that I could, yeah, yeah. but I knew that I had the knowledge. Uh, I could feel. Uh, yeah, because I, could I fill up the, yeah, the position I think so, for yeah. now while we look for the yeah. for for replacement. I'd never tried it before. I'd never okay. I'd never yeah. worked in media. I'd never been involved. But I had done a bit of public speaking in oh, school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I I didn't think speaking was going to be an issue. I didn't think the knowledge of sport was going to be an issue. Yeah, it course. was just going yeah. to be about how I was going to perform. Yeah, uh, you know, you can get uh, stage fright. You can get a lot of things, but. I think what helped is that um, I think Barry and I developed an instant chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was then easy to execute. What was the name of the show? Uh, it was Seamus International Sport. Uh, on and ZTV. Yeah, on ZTV. It was. Uh, it used to come out on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the show really took off. I mean, it yeah. uh, it it shook things uh, in Zim, uh, and uh, it it had a massive audience, and so that then uh, helped catapult. Uh, my name into the public domain. I think yeah. that is when people began to know that there was uh, a, a Mike Madoda out there. I think Barry was known before because he had done uh, TV work. He was with Joy yeah. TV uh, yeah. before. So he had a bit of uh, media experience. Yeah, and now that, Mike uh, Yeah, now there was a, a, a Mike Madoda. So yeah. I think that was sort of like when people began to know. Before that, I was just another regular guy on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks uh, to Steve Vickers who was cup tied. Yeah, so... so he was kind of like cup tied. Yeah, so he, he, yeah, he was cup tied. <laughs> So he then became yeah. the yeah. first producer. So because I was now thing, so he oh, now yeah. began to produce it. Oh, from yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, now. from yeah. behind the scenes. So he produced um, our first season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then later on, then uh, when he left, then I was presenting and producing, producing. and doing everything. So that, that is when uh, we went on international sport. And that, that was good because it was, um, you learn quite a lot when you do mm. shows like that. So I learned the TV production side of things, yeah. uh, which are the practical side of things. So that, that's something I, I, I do have knowledge about. Um, and then also just in terms of knowing sport, because you had to prep, you had to prepare had to, uh, yeah. for the things that you were going to be talking about. Uh, and also you were co-presenting with someone who was knowledgeable, mm -hmm. someone who was articulate. Uh, and so that pushed you. Because mm. you know you, you you don't want to be unequally yoked. So yeah. you, 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 you Yes, exactly. So, we, yeah. so, so I think we we pushed each other in many ways. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you'll say the same about me, but I I, I, I know <laughs> no, he. No, I, I know. <laughs> we're going to bring him. We're going to bring him onto the show. I know. I know. Uh, he, he certainly uh, very, very soon. Yeah, yeah he he yeah. certainly pushed me because yeah. uh, I think he had a he had a standard of excellence, yeah. uh, and so I then had to uh, aspire for that uh, mm -hmm. and to be at that level. And I think we we constantly kept pushing at it. And I think that was one of the things that the show was perhaps known for. Uh, it, it just had a quality and a standard of excellence. I think that made it stand out uh, from the rest of the viewing that was yeah. there. You know, when, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I posted that I was going to interview you guys, but separately and uh, a lot of guys were coming in, the very big question, the common question, most popular question was when and how did you meet Barry? Yeah. So, so that's started. how we met. Yeah, we, we, because <laughs> we met. Guys, the, you heard for yourself, yeah? you heard for yourself, this is how they met, because it's, it was a popular question. Mm. Everybody was wanted to know. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but uh, later to discover, I think we're actually remotely related. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> because we later discovered, so, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, he had, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, in Sanyat. Mm. Uh, and uh, they were very close to us, actually, as a, as, as a, as a family, yeah, the, yeah. the Laminis. 
they are actually very close relatives of Barry, of the Madandis. Oh, and in fact, Barry Aitombo, we are some fan Aitombo Yaksanyat. Aitombo Yaksanyat? Aitombo Yaksanyat. So, so oh, there yeah. is that... Yeah, there is that, <laughs> that, 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 that remote link. Okay, yes, uh, yeah. Yehuti, mm. you know what, uh, the, the, the Lamini's are a link. Oh, yeah. Because Isusu was Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, not Lamini. Uh, mm. And then the Lamini's are actually very close. Uh, yeah. relatives of, of the Manandi. So there, there is that remote link. Mm. Uh, and then obviously, Trima uh, Yellowbone as well. Oh, yeah. So yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm a DNA test. Family tree. I think I'm a DNA test. So how did you move from TV to radio? Yeah, so TV was, was, was good, it was exciting, but I think from um, just a marketing perspective, uh, TV is expensive. Okay. You yeah. know, right here, this uh, yeah. is, 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 is expensive mm -hmm. in, in comparison with other uh, forms of media. Mm -hmm. So they, when I think Zimbabwe hit its troubles, and we all know, of course, what happened in 2008, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. 2009, you know, that was a very shaky time, uh, yeah, even for corporate very, very Zimbabwe. Difficult. Trying to sell the TV show was very difficult <laughs> yeah. back then. You know, the, the, the sponsors, they just weren't there. And in order to do a quality production, you need people who are going to be putting in money, who are going to be yeah. investing their dollars to make sure that you've got a quality product. So radio then bec became a, a more cost-effective uh, mode uh, mm. of communication. Uh, for some of the products that we had. So that's why we then opted for radio because it was cheaper for uh, yeah, same our, concept, our just to same to concept. We just took it to, to, to radio. radio. Yeah. It initially started, I think it was with about a, a five or ten minute show on uh, breakfast. Uh, on five? Power FM. Five yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah, it was sponsored. That's too little. Uh, well, that, that's what the sponsor could afford. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <five minutes laughs> we, we started with that, yeah, but, five minutes but little, I yeah. think that, that out of that, then people realized it. Oh, you what, need this to give, actually, them more time. Yeah, give them more time. So yeah, we yeah. then uh, started a show on um, uh, SFM, Sport FM, uh, which is a former radio one. Yeah. We were then offered a slot to do the sports show between five. Uh, and six in the afternoon. So that's where we went. That's when we then created what was known as Sportsline. Uh, yeah. yeah, sports yeah, line. Yeah, people were asking about uh, sports line. Yeah, so what happened to sports line? Yeah, so, they were well, asking. Uh, yeah, question. so sports line became two properties. So there yes. was the radio property, and then there was also the online property, yeah. the digital property, which yeah. was uh, based on Facebook, where we opened up this this group, which at one time I think it was the second biggest uh, group. Uh, on Facebook in Zimbabwe, only behind uh, Dimbare.coms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think what then happened is because there were so many people. I think by the time we, we shut down uh, Sportslide, and I know people believe they shut it down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time we shut, shut down, down yeah. uh, Sportslide, we were approaching half a million people. I remember. On the group. I remember. So I was, I was, I was, managing I was it, managing it was becoming very, very difficult, because why? Because of our partnerships, corporate partnerships that we have, and also because um, we then do, of course, live other lives outside of Sportsline. Yeah. Um, you know, Barry's managing a business. Uh, we are involved in, in 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 the marketing domain where you must manage um, relationships that you've got with different corporates as well. So. What was happening on Sportsline back at the time, I'm sure it was becoming very fractious, in, uh, in toxic. very toxic. Uh, and so it became something that was a destruction and two, something that was also then perhaps threatening to tarnish our reputations oh, because we were the founders, we were the administrators. So anything that happened on, on, group, on Sportsline and be, then yeah. uh, the potential to damage other relationships that were putting money in our pockets and putting food on the table. Oh, so, yeah. so, so we had to any, make any the, examples of that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, no, no. <laughs> we, 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 we had to make the difficult, uh, difficult yeah. decision. Um, any example? That you know what? Oh, there was just so many things. You mm. know when you, when you got um, we we tried to even uh, get a group of of um, uh, other administrators, administrators to manage it, the group, but they they would always be compromised. That was the thing. Because oh, yeah. you know, you know how sport is, face ake, and then the standards, our community standards, were not being upheld. Oh, yeah. So if Alex did it something, still came back to yeah, you. and then it still comes back to us because ultimately, um, the rain. yes, Sportsline was our brand. And remember, yeah. Sportsline wasn't just the Facebook brand; it was also tied to what? 
to the this sports show, show to this which had radio. corporate partners. Mm. And so what was ever happening on Facebook was definitely affecting uh, what was happening on the radio show. So we then made the difficult decision to say, you know what, yes, we've got a community of 500,000 people, which is great because up to now, there are very few groups in Zimbabwe that have got 500,000 you know, people yeah, on them. Yeah. Um, brand, yeah, we, we had to make that painful decision to, to, to shut it down because we had to choose either we are digital and that is we are on Facebook and then we lose what's happening on radio mm -hmm. or we choose radio and we shut down this. You couldn't combine the two? It, what, like the content that you've got on radio? Uh, we could have, but uh, what we didn't want, yeah. the beauty of the group and what made that group grow was the fact that we allowed people to have a say. So it was not about us posting and them commenting. Oh, yeah. It was their ability as well to, to share information, to post, oh, yeah. to be in the family. Yeah, so they, that, they, you see, that, yeah, that, yeah. that was the beauty of the group. Because remember, one and of our, it, it, it left what was our tagline for, 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 it was for the fans. Yeah. That's what Sportsline was. But it also left. Uh, yeah, it's left, left it open. open. So when it was small, yeah. before we were sort of like 50,000, it was great. Yeah. It was great, you know, we, we had people who had been there from the start who understood. It was fun and people who were actually yeah, yeah, yeah. debating. I remember deep, we had a uh, war yeah. between Zambia and Zimbabwe on that group. Yes. On Sportsline. Yeah, because I was we, buzzing. we had so many people from Zambia who were on that group. Because mm. now there were people from South Africa, from Zambia, there were a continental presence. And I remember there was this scrap between, and it became so toxic, it became vulgar. And so forth. So yeah, we just yeah. couldn't. Uh, yeah, we just couldn't afford to hang on to it. So in the end, we decided. You know what? Uh, let's close that down um, in terms of Facebook, uh, and uh, let's concentrate on radio. Besides, radio has got greater reach. You of cannot course, compete yeah. with radio in just in terms of the numbers, the reach. Uh, with radio, you're talking about you know a million people every day yeah. that you're reaching out to. So I think it only made sense that we moved in that direction, and that is why then we then uh, put all, all okay. our eggs Fair in, enough. in, in, in developing the radio show. Fair enough. Fair enough. So with with, with radio, you you you, were, uh, you said on uh, SAFM. Yeah, we yeah. were on SFM, Sport FM. How long, how long did you? How long we did were you there stay? for shucks. We were there for about three years. Yeah. And then we migrated to Power FM mm -hmm. because they, our show now, literally, I think, uh, it grew, yeah, grew it bigger grew. than SAFM. It, uh, I think so. There was a feeling. So we were invited to go to Power FM. Uh, okay. And so then we went to Power FM and then we were on Power FM, I think, for another three years as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, at Power FM, uh, then we were fired. Uh, mid show, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you practically say we were dismissed. Fired. <laughs> we were dismissed. I think the show didn't need uh, the station didn't need us anymore. Really? Yeah, yeah. With that big following? Yeah, yeah. They, they they think I think they were they said that they were moving in a different direction. Wow. Uh, and so we were we were dismissed. We were handed little envelopes. We put. We thought, oh, this they must have paid us. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, go, go to my so, allowances. Uh, so we opened <laughs> the mid show and oh, just, mid show. Yeah, mid show. So we were told, oh, it's with immediate effect. So we then finished off the show. It was on a Friday. Did you announce on the show? Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't even oh, get the okay. chance to say, hey, goodbye. So it was a thing. I think it was a bit of a shock at the time. So we, we were then dismissed. So we then left. And then upon leaving, we thought we were going to take a bit of a sabbatical. But then we got an offer from uh, ZFM. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, hey, you guys, you guys have left. Uh, how about you join our team? And we said, oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So we joined yeah. ZFM and we've just never looked back. And uh, that is when we started working with you as well on ZFM. Yeah, it has uh, been great. Great team. Been great. Yeah. Uh, Sean, uh, Chris uh, Meads, he came on board. Yeah. And uh, she's been phenomenal. I yeah, mean, it has been awesome. Yeah, so, so we, we've been with ZFM uh, doing the same thing. Uh, between six and seven, uh, and you, since you, 2017. And you migrated with your fans, yeah, obviously. I, I think, uh, because, yeah, yeah uh, some listeners definitely moved yeah. uh, because th that's the nature of radio nowadays. Mm. I think people are no longer loyal to, uh, the to station. stations. Uh, people loyal are loyal to, the... to shows, they're yeah. loyal to personality. So yeah. it's very easy for uh, a listener to switch allegiance. Mm. If they hear that Alois is no longer on ZFM and is at Star FM, there will be a number of people that will go yeah. to Star FM in order to listen to Alois because agree, it's yeah. Alois that they like. And I think we've seen the same thing in South Africa with Robert Marau, yeah. where uh, SABC thought they could kick him off, but he's just literally taken uh, himself 
uh, to um, other stations and to other platforms. And people still uh, yeah, follow and him. People still follow him. People and, actually Google. Yeah, and he's, Google him to look good. Where, where he, is he this remains, guy? Yeah. He remains just as influential. Yeah. So, I and I think that is why you then understand why we took those decisions when we had to drop uh, Sportsline, the Facebook group, because we wanted to create uh, a brand uh, that was strong enough to be able to function anywhere, mm. uh, anywhere, uh, at whatever time. If we are ever kicked off this platform, we can go on that platform because the brand is strong enough, yeah. uh, and that's what it's all about. But maybe uh, we look, 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 looking at it differently. Uh, if you were in that kind of uh, uh, business, maybe you could have been a sports brand, sports <laughs> line. You know, maybe you could be wearing yeah. uh, sports line T-shirts. Yeah, I, th I think we, we did. Uh, 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 did, we, you, did you ever think about that? We, we did quite a bit uh, in terms of sports line. Uh, yeah, we did quite a bit, but we really didn't commercialize the brand. Mm. Uh, we could have, but uh, we didn't back then. But I think <coughs> at that time, really, uh, yeah, we, did, yeah, so we, much, we had quite, so, a, quite so, a few so things that were happening. And so yeah. it wasn't exactly something that was going to be high on the priority list. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is it something that you can look back and think? I don't know if we can revive Sports Line. I, I think... <laughs> I think revive it. Panama Kobe Kid Yeah, yeah, just, well. yeah just too the many. The type of sports line, they like too many. ten of them. Yeah, too many. Too many. Come out, Even yeah. during the, our time, actually, there are a lot yeah. of people. There were like a lot of breakaway factions. I know. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of people. Like, we're not happy with the way yeah. that you you do yeah. this, <laughs> and they'll try and form their groups, but they, yeah. they would never. They would never really take off because nothing beats the the original. The original. Nothing yeah. beats the the authentic product. Yeah. Uh, and so you can try and form something, but as long as it doesn't have the true DNA, doesn't have the true nature. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of what sports line is, yeah. uh, I don't think sports line can ever exist in this in the Zimbabwe context outside of Barry and Mike. Of course, because I of think course. that 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 what that's what lies it's in yours. the genesis of yeah. sports line. Yeah, football, football. Yeah, how did you get into? Football, like owning a club, owning a football club. I, I, what happened? Because I, I'm not seeing the, the link here. Of, I, I, of actually, all the story. I don't then, own what, a club. Then what happened? <laughs> I'm, I'm with Golden Eagles Football Club. Yes. I think um, yeah. Golden Eagles Football Club is, I think it's the brainchild of, of Barry. Uh, and uh, I think he's always had a passion. A apart from just being, um, people know him, of course, for on the media side. He played he's football. someone who played for yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he's always carried this extraordinary passion uh, mm -hmm. for the game and I think the, there comes a time I think maybe in your evolution as a person in your growth in your maturity as a person where you seek to uh, perhaps just do a, a lot more than just talk mm -hmm. and seek to make an impact in football and I think this was one of the ways that uh, he looked at it to say you know what let's form something that is going to be uh, a shining example of what it is to be a professional sports institution in Zimbabwe. Uh, something that's going to impact the lives of not just the football players and the children that come in contact with, but mm -hmm. anyone that comes into contact uh, with, with, with the institution. And then something that will be able also to be uh, a high achiever because uh, the vision that has been set for Golden Eagles Football Club is, uh, it's not a small one. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a big vision. It's a vision that challenges. It's a, it's a vision that uh, should motivate anyone who is a part of the institution. Uh, and so that, that, that was his birth child. Uh, and so in then putting it together, he obviously called some like-minded people. I think mm -hmm. people he thought could uh, add value to the project, the mm -hmm. institution. And that is where we came in. Say, so, you know what, let's build this, uh, this thing and uh, let's do something that perhaps uh, a Zimbabwe football one day will take a look back and say, you know what, yeah. Uh, you guys have done well. It's a great project. You, 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 you've you mm. made an impact. Uh, it's a, it's a great project. I, I, I love the project, uh, obviously. I'm one of the number one fans mm. uh, for the club. Your son is, <laughs> is, is, is playing. He's is playing. Is, yeah, my son is. That, that's why I actually brought my yeah. son there, yeah. you know, because I saw that this is a professional club where you can actually grow. Mm. You know, it doesn't... It doesn't have to be wow, this big. I, yeah. His development was very of, of, mm. of paramount importance to me, and I thought that that was actually a very good place to actually grow professionally. Run where he can actually. He was coming from a background of professionalism. Yeah. He was coming from high school in mm. England, mm. and I looked around and I'm like, no man, this is where you should be because of that. And uh, you, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing great. Yeah. Any what's what's you talked about vision? Mm. You talked about vision yeah. for the club. What's 
what the vision? Where do you see the club? Let's say well, the, in five years. Do you have ambitions to, to the club get into, the, to be the, into the, the Premier League? The first League? Zimbabwean club to win the Cup Champions League. Uh, that's uh, and that's so, what we want to So yeah. we, we, yeah. we, we want to say that off the cuff, yeah. uh, we don't believe that it is a daunting ambition. Uh, I know there are many people who will be like, oh, shucks. Mm. And they're in Division 1, they haven't even made it to the Premier League. But, but then dreams, I, I think if, 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 if your vision doesn't scale, yeah, yeah. If if your vision doesn't leave you uh, having sleepless nights, uh, then it's not a vision worth following. Yeah. Uh, vision is going to be big. Uh, vision is going to be challenging, uh, and so that that's the vision ultimately uh, to become the finest sports institution on the continent. Uh, and people right now, yes, they might be skeptical, but you just need to rewind to you know fifty years ago, uh, and the formation of Kaiser Chiefs in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, the Motawum would have been met with the same skepticism. Uh, they would have been ridiculed in pretty much the same way that how dare you uh, try and build something that's going to upstage uh, Orlando Pirates. Like what they do to me when yeah, I talk yeah, about Honda Valley. Yeah, about Honda Valley. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, they, you should excuse them because sometimes, yeah. sometimes people can't see it. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I don't think it's their fault, but they just can't see it. Mm. Uh, and I also believe that vision is also a function of exposure. You know, if you've been exposed to a lot of things, if you've gone out there, if you've traveled, if you've seen, mm. uh, those things challenge, they motivate, they grow you. Uh, and then you do have a picture that you have. You know, it's, it's the argument that we've been having about sports facilities in Zimbabwe. When you talk about what, you know, I've seen the pictures you posted about Honda Valley. Mm. Uh, when you talk about certain things in Zimbabwe, there are people who laugh you off. Yeah. Or I, when, I, when you discuss certain confused. things and you say this is not good enough. There are people who are like, ah, you know what? But it's because you have a certain picture in your mind. You know, mm. you know what, what, what you're driving at. So it's the same thing with, with, with Golden Eagles. I think everything is just building up towards that. Now, no one at Golden Eagles claims to be an expert. No one claims to have been there to have done that. Uh, but what we are doing is that we are growing as we go. We make mistakes, we correct them. Sometimes we make good decisions. We pat each other on the back, we congratulate each other. But it's always about moving forward. It's always about learning, growing, moving forward, and making sure that year on year, season on season, month on month, the club is experiencing some level of growth. And also setting a good example. Yeah. The professionalism level that, that you guys are, are setting out there. Yeah. I, think, I think it's, uh, it's something that... The, it's, an, it's, a, it's a good example for for a lot of administrators out there and, and to me, actually can actually come and say, you know what, we want to do things the, right. The, the, the Let's biggest watch example, what Golden is, Eagles are to, doing. To, to add to what you were saying is, I think the biggest example that maybe Golden Eagles can set for a lot of administrators is to remove the excuse of money. Yeah, thank right. you. To thank remove you. the excuse of money because thank I you. think uh, finance has been used as an excuse for far too long. Yeah. That we can't do certain things because of mm. uh, We are not doing this because there is no money. This can't be done because there is no money. A lot of things that uh, Golden Eagles is doing is simply because there is an idea. There is yeah. a plan. And there are people willing to run with it. And, and sometimes yeah. that's what is needed. Yeah. Sometimes that's what Zimbabwean football just needs to do is to afford the people with ideas, give them an opportunity. Yeah. Afford the people with a plan, an opportunity to execute what they can do. Uh, not everything is about money. So when people see the glitz and the glam, and I hope that's what they see when they see Golden Eagles. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, they think uh, there's a lot of money, money that's being spent. No, is, no, no, no. Yeah. Some of it is just, 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 just doing things professionally. Doing Correct things way. right. Yeah. So making sure that the names on the jerseys are printed right. You don't pay a lot of money for you don't, you don't pay. You pay the same amount of money as any other club that's printing jerseys. Yeah. Making sure that the font looks great. Yeah. That's and it. the effort that you take to take yeah. a plaster yeah. to Namira Ibaksirbe jersey, which you a magic marker, is the same effort. Doing a player launch. Yeah. Just making sure things are done right. <laughs> and, and things. So there are various aspects, and that's just things, obviously, on, on, on the marketing and media side. But there yeah. are a, a number of things, I think, that are being done, which are a result of good ideas there is a lot of investment believe yeah. me that is going in because course, yeah. uh, running a football club needs money, needs money and yeah. it takes money yeah. but i think that we would be having a greater impact in our local football if the money that was there was actually used wisely yeah. 
Sometimes you, you get to feel that, you know what, or you get to see at different clubs and different institutions that the resources that I have, which are not enough, by the way, are not being used wisely. Yeah. That we could better use our resources and would have a greater impact with the little that we have. Not just the impact. I'll tell you, uh, for me, when I'm looking at it, it's an investment. Mm. It's a serious investment. And I know that one day it's going to come back. All of it. You know, it's, it's, it's going to come back. You, you're going to get the rewards of doing things right. Yeah. Whenever you do things right, there is a reward that comes with it. For me, I look at it as an investment. Before we let you go, yeah. before we let you go, there are a lot of people also uh, asking yeah. that, do, do you think one day maybe you can set foot at 53 Livingston Avenue? I hope the address would have changed by then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they would have demolished that house and put in and a, moved a, 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 a triple story, a triple no, story, a triple a, story, a triple story. That's a terrible location. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think they should okay. move. Okay. Think do you think you can get in there and take it away from there? Uh, no, I was, uh, do, do you think I one think day it's, it's very possible? premature to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I think um, as far as football administration is concerned, uh, I think I've been in my infancy. Uh, yeah. It's a journey that uh, we've just started. Uh, still a lot to learn. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on myself now. I'm a young man, very young man. Uh, and so to be honest, I'm not in, <laughs> under any pressure to be getting into that yeah. level uh, of football administration. There's still a lot of work to be done at Golden yeah. Eagles. Uh, and it will be too, too early and it will be premature right now to leave Golden Eagles uh, for national service. And as much as anyone would want to serve their nation, but I think... There's still a lot of work to be done at Golden Eagles, and uh, we will only leave when that work is done. After you win the Champions League. After we win the Champions League, that's for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Mike, before you go, yeah. you talked about your support, football, yeah. and you are a big fan. What's your big, greatest moment in football? The moment that you'll be like, wow, that was my greatest ever moment in football. Okay. As a fan. Can, can I, can I, uh, my greatest moment? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Uh, I'll tell you, Messi winning the World Cup. Ranks, yeah. ranks. Why? Because 2004, when no one knew about Messi, uh, I predicted that there'll be a young man uh, who's in La Masia, who's going to take the world by storm. Uh, we were on the show with Barry, with Steve Vickers. Wow. Uh, and so that is why I've got uh, this love for Messi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. This, is 2000, this is even before he became known. Uh, yeah. Because you already he, knew him. Yeah, because he would later make it around 2007. That's when he started getting substitute appearances uh, under ICAD ETC, and then really stormed onto the scene in 2008. Uh, but by then, back then, you know, he was really making an impression. So you know, him winning the World Cup for me, I think, just reward for a phenomenal career. Uh, on the local scene, I would have to say. Greatest sporting moment for me, oh, not too sure. Eh? I think, I think those glory years for Highlanders, ninety eight to two thousand and two. Yeah, I think I watched some of the best football I've ever watched. Tulani uh, Mui. Yeah, what a player! What yeah. a player! Tulani <laughs> Bia. Uh, uh, blessing That's for him. I've never seen such yeah. a, a, a seen a big wow. pairing like that one. They were phenomenal. Uh -huh. You know, we used to say Is system. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, again. You know, they played great football. Zenzo Moyo, Blessing mm. Gubis, yeah, Kupos, that was a great uh, Tabani Masao, you know, the, the, you know, Raman Gumbo, obviously the first coach, he did yeah. the first two years. Eddie May came and did the latter two years. So I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh I also enjoyed uh Zimbabwe cricket ninety-nine. Mm. Uh, getting to the Super Six. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they captivated the nation. What, what yeah, a performance. Course, yeah. Neil Johnson, uh, Murray Goodwin, great, yeah. great player. So that was phenomenal. But uh, I also want to mention a heartbreak. Uh, 1996. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know where you're going. You always talk about it. Because I was in this yeah. stadium. That's where <laughs> I was in this stadium. I was yeah. actually in Harare. My sister had invited me to Harare. Yeah. And her um, husband, Loved soccer. Mm. He was a big fan. Uh, kept, you know, I used to support Blackpool, actually. Yeah. Uh, and so took, took me to Guanzura to watch Highlanders because he knew I supported Highlanders. Mm -hmm. uh, and one Alois Munjira with a header. 
uh, that uh, broke that our hearts. That was terrific. Yeah, it was an excellent header. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. But what a game. The that game itself. A game. The I game mean, itself. It was not a, the build up yeah, and everything. It was phenomenal. That yeah. game. So that that that's that's one of the moments I remember from uh, from you. I also remember your uh, the game you beat. I watched that game as well. You beat Acadia four two in, in the, the BP Cup final. BP Cup final. Yeah, yeah. I know National Usman Misi scored two for uh, for, for Acadia. Acadia, and then Morgan Katazo. I think nah, he scored. We were on fire. Uh, Captain yeah. Leonard was on fire. Yeah, but that was a game. Yeah. Farah Mbizo. Yeah, in midfield. Captain was on fire. Yeah, phenomenal team. Phenomenal team. That team, I mean, was. Excellent. You know, there are three teams, Panangandakura, mm. which, which, which I saw play football, which was like really great. I know people talk about Charles and Cloudy's Caps United. Yeah, great team. But I don't think they were as good as your team. Your team was uh, at a different level. Uh, and uh, the Dynamo's team that went to the Champions League final. Uh, and then also well. the, the, that Highlanders team from 98 to, to 2002, as well as the 1987 one. But uh, those were phenomenal teams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to I'm hoping to Yeah, I'm hoping to so <laughs> <laughs> Like, thank you so much for coming to the show. You know, it was awesome to know yeah. a lot about you. Know, we've worked together, I've known you for a long time, yeah. but there are a lot of things that I got to know today that I got to learn. So, thank you so much for coming yeah. on to the show. We really, really do appreciate it. Yeah. Let's hope that we are going to have a very, very heavy, heavy yeah. show like this when we bring. Your partner Can in I just say something? Very manager. I, I know we want to bring him onto the show. A lot of Dynamos fans who are watching. Yeah. Uh, my the rest of my family supports Dynamos, oh. so I'm a rebel. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no. All right. I'm, I'm a rebel. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming to the show, guys. This was Mike Madoda. He was here t- sharing his uh, football journey, as I call it, football journey. But for the rest of us, it's actually his sporting journey as well, from Sanyati to Arare to the University of Arare of Zimbabwe, that is, University of Zimbabwe, all the way to be a uh, part uh, co-owner uh, of uh, Golden Eagles, like you heard that they've got ambitions to actually win the Champions League one day for Zimbabwean football. I believe that. I do believe that. But for now, we are out of here, guys. My name is Alois Bunjira. And the group was powering this show. Let's meet again next week when we bring you another Zimbabwe footballing legend to come here and share with us their footballing journey. For now, we are out of here. Ta, 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 out.